between what happens to noise A and see what happens to Clemson. But this puts three and a half million square feet of warehouse in the middle of North Charleston. The only access to it is through Park Circle. It's served by 18 wheelers. You can understand why Mayor Summers is a little upset. These are some of the things that Jeff was pointing out that have already occurred at Noise But for the first time in its history, the city of North Charleston has public access to the water. Anybody that lives in Charleston has seen how hard Mount Pleasant, has seen how hard Charleston, has seen how hard all these cities play public access to the water. I think Mayor Riley's made a career of it. This is a phenomenal facility that would just absolutely be cut off by this plan from South Carolina Public Rail. So there's, there's quality of life issues that are substantial. There's a lot of private sector business issues that are exposed. There's a 50-year spay war lease with is supposedly really increasing the employees act. I think Jack mentioned there's a number of individual leases, 80 billion, 80 buildings that have to be demolished, 40 of them are restored. All that public access is lost. And for those of you who don't know, and I have to admit, I'm from Charleston, been here all my life. I did not appreciate the quality of the historic buildings in the city of North Charleston. These buildings are substantial in any city. That's the powerhouse, that's the former Navy hospital. Now these are noise at in Clemson. When the Navy turned this over, to the city of North Charleston, they went through this exchange. There were certain things put in place, and there were three uh, areas that were designated historic districts, two of which are registered with the National Historic Trust in Washington, one of which now is in compliance and can go in. These are those historic buildings that we're talking about, okay? There is South Carolina Public Works Plan. The National Historic Trust, as you can imagine, the Historic Charleston Foundation, I'm not excited about this concept. It's, it's a dangerous uh, concept. It's also <coughs> a bloody expensive one. Whether you look at the Memorandum of Understanding or South Carolina Public Rail's plan, it is expensive. It's estimated that the overpasses required to put this rail in would cost in excess of $200 million before you even try to put in the railroad component of it. So, there's a lot going on. It's very important for everybody to get involved. Uh, Mayor Summy has been fighting this battle uh, with his council um, for almost a year now, uh, but it's ongoing. They are relentless. And, you know, we've got alternatives. We've got to study the alternatives. We've got to look at a regional plan. We've got to have a vision for the region. <laughs> and it's got to work together. There is a reason that the railroads historically ran north and south on our peninsula. The reason was when a train moves up and down on our peninsula, our peninsula has to run north and south. So if it goes north and south, it doesn't block the major arteries coming in and out of our city. The problem with South Carolina Public Rail's plan is it primarily runs east and west. The original first commercial rail line in the United States was the best friend. It ran between King and Meeting Street. It is still there today. That right of way could carry as many as five sets of rail tracks and not impede the north-south vehicular traffic. It's, you know, you can look at it from a pragmatic sense, an historical sense, a money sense, or just what's good for the people that live here, and you come up with the South Carolina Public Rail Plan not being the answer. But if people don't get involved, you don't know where this is going to go, and it will, a lot of big decisions are going to be made in the next five to ten years, and, well, I'm sorry, next five to ten months, but they will impact us for the next 50 to 100 years. Thank you all.